we're just arriving now. What's the name of the island? Digura. Digura. Happy with your ride? Yeah, very good. No, it went really quick. Um, not bumpy at all. So we've arrived on Digura Island. Very cool. Took a pretty fast speedboat. Took about two hours from Mali. I'm here on the island. This is the first populated island that I've been on. Not a resort island, but a populated island with locals here. So let's see. Come check it out with us. We're being loaded in a little truck. Good. Yeah, this is the world's smallest truck ever. But it's great. We're enjoying it. We like stuff like this. All right, we're ready to go. Digura Retreat Beach, your home and paradise, they call it. Uh, it's owned by uh, someone in the Maldives here. The staff, it's got a skeleton staff. Only a couple of people that run it. There's no amenities in regards to like lunch or dinner or anything like that. They do serve a breakfast. This little uh, guest house has five rooms and uh, we're gonna go check my room out now. I'm not big on room reviews, I told you that, but uh, we have to show you because we're in the Maldives here. So this is the room that you get. Of course, nice comfy bed. Lighting it could be a little bit better. TV that I've never turned on. Uh, a little bit of a work desk here. Uh, here's what I mean, you know, there's no direct access to the beach. It's pretty much a room with a view. <laughs> and there's the bathroom facilities. So they're all there. I mean, it's basic uh, and it's nothing bad. I think it's great, uh, a great little room. Well, this is breakfast, a decorer, outdoor seating. The beach is right there behind those trees. You can see it from here. Right guys, I brought you on a little adventure. You're probably wondering, am I in the jungle or what am I up to? Well, I brought you to a populated island called Dugura. It is in the Maldives here. What am I doing here? Well, I'm bringing you guys along with me so we can compare what a homestay or bed and breakfast on a inhabited island in the Maldives, not one of those luxury islands, is like. We're gonna be here for a few days. We're gonna try the food. We're gonna try the beaches and of course, my wife is gonna try the diving. The water is pretty much the same throughout the Maldives, no matter where you go. It's beautiful blue water, as you can see. The guest house that I rented was $60, okay? It cost me $35 by speedboat to get here, plus a dollar transfer from the airport. Now here's the add-ons. If I wanna go anywhere on this island, it pretty much cost me $10 to go either that way or that way. Now, the room is good. It's about a, equal to about a three-star resort. No bathtub or anything fancy like that. But the shower, clean, bedding's good. The other thing I wanna point out to you is the guest house that I just rented is about 15 meters away from the beach here. And it's, it sprawls for about two kilometers that way and one kilometer in front of me. Now, we got a lot to do here in a few days. We gotta check out what you get for value for money. Or is it value for money? There are no paved roads here in Degra. There's no traffic signs or traffic lights here or I think maybe I saw two cars in the whole island. So this is one of the local transportation alternatives here. The bicycle. How are you? Are you the bike rental guy? Well, how much is it? To... It's for the day, $5. $5 a day, yeah? Okay. So 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. All right, perfect. Okay. okay, I'll come back to see you, thanks. 
So that's one of the alternatives on the island. Here's the bikes. Five bucks a day, eight to eight, he said. I guess nobody should be out past eight o'clock on the islands here. Now that little truck there is the one that brought me and my wife from the ferry to drop our bags off from the hotel. So I was told if you want to rent that to drive to the Long Beach at the end of the islands, 10 bucks each way. Uh, they certainly could use Uber or Grab Taxi here. Uh, they need some competition. So this is an island. And what I mean by that is that, guys, people are living here. <laughs> They've lived here before you got here. This isn't a brand new luxury resort. The Moldavian people are here. Their religion is here. You can feel it. They pray about four times a day. Um, and as a foreigner here, I feel a little bit, uh, I don't know. I don't really feel completely welcome. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying that they keep to themselves and they kind of want the foreigners to keep to themselves. I didn't find any kind of like local foods like the Thais have, you know, in Thailand, where you get pad thai or a dish like that on any of the islands in Thailand. I didn't see it here. It was kind of like, please go to the Western restaurants we have for you. I expected different. I thought there'd be a couple of grills going, some, some, some food happening here, some chicken or something on the grill. Maybe some local dishes for a few bucks here and there. Eh, not happening. You're either eating $20 cheeseburgers or $20 pizzas, and you're not really getting that uh, experience. So I'm on the other side of the island here. There's two sides, of course. This is the rough side. Definitely you cannot snorkel or do anything out here, okay? And it's too shallow and it's got a rocky bottom. On the other side is a beautiful white beach they call, funny enough, Bikini Beach here. And we'll go check that out later. I'm gonna pop up into the sky with the drone. And we're gonna get a good, uh, good idea what this island looks like. I was talking about that us and them feeling here in the island. The people are nice though, but they don't want to really pretty much mingle with you. And that could be because, you know, um, this is a new thing for the Maldives. They haven't really opened this up, this uh, guest house thing, only until about 10 years ago. And you can still see many new ones popping up here. So. It will get there. The interesting thing about who, who is running these things are people that had worked on all these luxury islands, they've come back home to see if they can make a go of it on their own island. Well, hmm, you have a long way to go. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing, but um, you have a long way to go because uh, there are certain expectations that come with that Maldives tag. So it's just basically, we're here, there's your room, and uh, have a good time in the sun. Nobody really pushing um, any tours. No real drive to get you to do anything. Now, let's talk diving prices on this island. I mean, you're not saving any money diving here. So guys, it can be done, but this isn't the backpackers or the even the really uh, frugal travel budget uh, place to come either. So I would just, you know, what I would say is instead of doing a week here, uh, save up your coin and probably uh, use, stay less nights at a more developed island, luxury island, 
and get the full bang for the buck out of that because here it's good uh, it's cool it's fun uh, but it's missing that vibe and uh, there's a market for it but uh, I don't think it's the market for me I can't argue about this though I mean this is truly amazing right I mean absolutely stunning water you'll get that on any island here in the Maldives but those islands over there those are those luxury resorts the Conrads the intercontinentals the St. Regis all that beautiful stuff okay if I'm gonna add it up uh, with food and everything here it probably cost me about we'll call it 125 to 130 a night uh, for my wife and I to eat here without alcohol and on one of the luxury islands it's about 170 to 200 but you get five times the room size you can drink if you want they'll drive you all over the island there's lots going on usually they have free water sports excluding uh, jet skis and uh, the vibe is much different and there's probably about four or five swimming pools if they haven't even given you one in your own room that is so you know much different um, you can hear the prayer in the background they do that four times a day here on the local island but uh, not on the uh, luxury islands so I hope that answers all your questions 